It's amazing to think that Mercedes is only now bringing a mid-sized SUV to the UK, despite having previously sold the GLK model elsewhere in Europe. It has at last decided to build a BMW X3 and Audi Q5 rival in right-hand drive. And here it is, the new GLC. The newcomer is built on a heavily adapted version of the C-Class platform and is available in the UK only as a diesel. All models get four-wheel drive, an automatic gearbox and, as you can see, a big boot. Certainly bigger than the C-Class, but not quite a match for the BMW X3. And there's no seven-seater option, whereas Land Rover's Discovery Sport does offer those extra two seats. Again, there's more space here than in the C-Class with plenty of headroom and plenty of legroom. There's even enough space for three adults to sit side by side without too much elbow bashing. Child seats are taken care of with Isofix mounting points on the outer two seats. As a driver, you get a great commanding view of the road, although I do have a criticism. I'm five foot four and a half, which is not particularly tall, granted. However, the seat is in the furthest most position and the steering wheel is in the closest position to driver. And the average height of the UK female is actually five foot three. And I really think that they would struggle to drive this car. On a plus side, the Mercedes interior really is quite special. The materials, the quality of the finish, or whether it's the clarity of the dials. This is like traveling first class. Another slight reservation is around this screen, which appears to be tacked on as a bit of an afterthought. We'd also seriously consider upgrading from the basic Garmin sat-nav to Mercedes' own command system. Not only is the GLC only available with a diesel engine, but there's only one choice of engine size as well, which is 2.1 litres. Mercedes does, however, offer it with either a 170 horsepower output or, as in the one that we're in today, 204. Both are teamed up with a 9-speed automatic transmission. That gearbox helps to take advantage of the engine's torque. Mercedes say it would do 0 to 60 in 7.6 seconds, so it's a pretty quick car. And when you're on the move and open her up, it feels quicker again. As we've found with this engine and other Mercedes models though, it can be quite noisy, both at idle and when accelerating. As for fuel economy, well, the official figure is 56 miles per gallon. Yeah, right, we are getting 36.2 miles per gallon, but for its size of engine and size of car, that is about average. Our car is also on AMG Line Sport suspension, which gives the ride an unnecessarily sharp edge. Upgrading to air suspension or even sticking to the standard non-sport setup would be preferable. It's not like the GLC is particularly sporty, there's just a bit too much lean in the corners and the steering, although it's quick, it offers very little feedback. For the real keen drivers out there, the BMW X3 is definitely the winner in this department. Mercedes expects most GLC buyers to opt for the 250D because its CO2 output and thus tax rating is the same as the less powerful 220Ds. Prices start at £35,000, with the more powerful engine attracting a £1,200 premium. All things considered, we'd still put the BMW X3 as the class leader. However, the Mercedes isn't really that far behind. To watch the Land Rover Discovery Sport review, click here. To subscribe to the Telegraph Cars YouTube channel, click here. And visit the Telegraph Cars website by clicking here.